Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. Spindle cell lesions of the breast can be a really challenging topic, but they're one of my favorites, along with myeloides tumors and what we'll see tomorrow, papillary lesions. Um, so I'm going to walk through kind of my approach when I look at these cases, low power to high power, and how I approach them both on core biopsy and resection. So let's take a look at case one, just spindle case one. Um, here we see that we have a core needle biopsy. Um, and I always ask myself, where am I actually? Am I in axillary soft tissue? Am I in dermis? Do I see any breast epithelial elements or not? And indeed, we see, as I scroll in, hopefully it's loading nicely for you, as I attempt, here we go. I do see some breast epithelial elements, so I know, yes, indeed, I am in the breast. Now, here I can see from low power that I have a distinct lesion getting up to load a little bit, um, that shows focally irregular edges, um, but at the same time, it's fairly delineated. So it sends some mixed signals as to whether it's malignant infiltration or still fairly well circumscribed. I can also appreciate from here that we have a, a, a collagenized stromal component and then a more cellular component. When I go in higher, as we will do here, slowly but surely. Here we go. As I go in higher on the spindle cell component, I can see that I have uh, sort of a, a streaming arrangement of spindle cells. I'm trying to zoom, so I apologize for the delays. And in some areas, kind of a patternless pattern arrangement. Um, from this intermediate power, I think it tells me I'm at approximately 10x power, I can see that there is some nuclear hyperchromasia, but the cells are still relatively bland. From higher power, as uh, we start to zoom in, I can appreciate more readily that indeed there is some hyperchromasia in some of the lesional cells as I scan around to the areas that have kind of less um, pattern to them. I see some nuclear enlargement, some hyperchromasia, really quite bland. I'm not appreciating brisk mitotic activity. Um, so my differential here is in the family of bland uh, to atypical but bland spindle cell lesions of the breast. These can be very difficult to classify. Um, as I uh, scroll through the different sections of the tissue, I can appreciate again some loosely cohesive areas of these spindle cells with the mild to moderate cytologic atypia. The presence of this dense pink eosinophilic collagen is pertinent because there are several lesions among the spindle cell lesions of the breast that um, can display this pattern. Some metaplastic carcinomas, uh, particularly the spindle cell and the fibromatosis-like metaplastic carcinomas show brightly eosinophilic collagenous stroma. And um, it's also a component you can see in the myofibroblastomas and sometimes in hyalinized uh, hypocellular areas of fibroepithelial patients. So I see, okay, I do see some of this dense collagen. Hmm, I better think about uh, whether this is a metaplastic carcinoma of the breast or not. Um, if you take one thing away from our discussion on uh, approaching spindle cell lesions in the breast, it is that the primary diagnoses that you should consider are in your differential, metaplastic carcinoma, metaplastic carcinoma, metaplastic carcinoma. This is the number one entity we need to consider and exclude before we can visit any of the other lesions in our differential. Um, the metaplastic carcinomas, as uh, we, you know, are composed of um, tumors that have heterologous divergent differentiation. It's those that show the bland or atypical spindle cells um, that can be difficult to recognize as even being epithelial in origin. So as I scan through here, what I'm looking at are not only the cytologic features as they load of these spindle cells, but also whether or not I see an epithelial component. If I see an associated malignant epithelial component, my diagnosis is made. I don't even need immunostains. The presence of an associated either carcinoma in situ or an invasive 
I would say, you know, conventional, uh, non-special type or even special type carcinoma. By conventional, I mean non-metaplastic. So a conventional invasive ductal carcinoma component or an epithelial component, done. That makes it a metaplastic carcinoma. So as I scan through here, I'm not seeing a, a very um, prominent epithelial nests. And in this second core, we certainly start to see more cytologic atypia than we saw in the first. Um, increased nuclear size, again, streaming the hyperchromasia, and some, we'll see some scattered mitotic activity. So what I'm looking for as I scan through, are there any epithelial uh, components? So scanning through very focally on this core, the right-hand side core, I do here start to see a nest of epithelial cells. In fact, these cells are starting to uh, display squamous differentiation. We see um, a hint of intercellular bridges between some of these cells here, the distinct cell borders and the pinking up of the cytoplasm. Here alone, I can say, ah, all the features fit I'm dealing with a metaplastic carcinoma. On the second core, 